Hello everyone, welcome to History and Culture. In ancient China's feudal dynasties, the emperor held supreme power and was always surrounded by numerous beautiful palace maids. These maids were not only for entertainment and pleasure but also bore the responsibility of attending to the emperor's daily needs. However, puzzlingly, despite their outstanding looks and gentle temperament, the emperor often chose eunuchs to serve him closely instead of these palace maids. At first glance, this seems like a difficult decision to understand. After all, palace maids, with their beauty and gentleness, seem more suited for the role than eunuchs. So why did ancient emperors prefer eunuchs as their close attendants? According to some historians, the consorts in the imperial harem always lived under the shadow of power. Not only did they need to win the emperor's favor, but they also had to maintain their position amidst the increasingly fierce harem struggles. For these consorts, their ambition was to become the empress and ultimately the mother of the nation. In this process, their competitors included not only other consorts but also the large number of palace maids in the court. Though palace maids held lowly status, they were often strikingly beautiful and spent every day close to the emperor, attending to his needs. This constant proximity gave them the opportunity to gain the emperor's favor. Once they did, they could rise quickly, possibly even threatening the positions of the consorts. This potential danger kept the consorts constantly vigilant, ensuring that palace maids had limited opportunities to approach the emperor. Moreover, the consorts were unwilling to give palace maids the chance to showcase their charms. Historically, many consorts intentionally controlled the interactions between palace maids and the emperor to reduce the risk of competition. For example, in the Ming dynasty, the empress or high-ranking concubines often held significant power within the harem. Through strict management of palace maids, they prevented these women from influencing their own standing by winning the emperor's favor. In such a complex court environment, eunuchs became a safer choice. Compared to palace maids, eunuchs were considered more secure. Due to their physiological condition, eunuchs lacked the ability to engage in sexual or gender-based power struggles. This made them non-threatening in the eyes of the consorts. Both the emperor and the consorts preferred eunuchs as close attendants because they wouldn't develop emotional entanglements or romantic feelings and wouldn't pose any unnecessary temptation to the emperor. Additionally, the status of eunuchs set them apart from other figures in the court. While palace maids sometimes became involved in court struggles, eunuchs had no family background or external connections, making it less likely they would collude with outside forces. This made them more reliable as personal attendants. This aspect was particularly crucial. As the emperor not only had to consider his personal needs but also had to guard against the complex power struggles within the harem. Eunuchs. In this regard, became a vital tool for the emperor in maintaining a balance of power. Thus, the relationship between eunuchs and the emperor often went beyond the typical master-servant dynamic forming a unique symbiotic bond. Since eunuchs were usually castrated and brought into the palace from a young age, they lost both their gender and family ties, with their entire future and fate dependent on the emperor alone. For eunuchs, the emperor's favor and trust dictated everything. Therefore, eunuchs' loyalty to the emperor far exceeded that of palace maids or other officials. Historically, many eunuchs gained the emperor's deep trust through their loyalty. A typical example is Zheng He from the Ming dynasty. He was bestowed the surname Zheng by Emperor Yongle, and is known as Sanbao eunuch. In his youth, Zheng He served Prince Zhu Di and was known for his intelligence and military prowess. He contributed to the success of the Jingnan campaign and was promoted to the high-ranking position of Grand Eunuch. Zheng He not only became a close confidant of Emperor Yongle but also, through his wisdom and loyalty, undertook the remarkable achievement of leading seven voyages to the Western Seas. 
expanding the Ming Dynasty's trade and diplomatic influence. Zheng He's story demonstrates that eunuchs were not merely servants to the emperor. Many times, they became his trusted aides, playing significant roles in politics and military affairs. The loyalty of eunuchs was not only reflected on a personal level but also in their deep reliance on the emperor's fate. Without external forces to support them, eunuchs' lives depended entirely on the emperor's favor, leaving them with no other way out. This dependence made them more loyal and cautious than other court members. Which is one of the key reasons why emperors often preferred eunuchs as close attendants. Additionally, in the ancient imperial palace, the emperor not only needed to handle political affairs but also required someone to take care of his daily life. These tasks were often tedious and exhausting. While palace maids were often beautiful, they might not have had the strength or endurance to handle the heavy chores of the court. In contrast, eunuchs, who were trained rigorously from a young age, were typically stronger and more enduring. Serving the emperor for life, eunuchs were thoroughly familiar with the complexities of palace affairs, making them more adept at handling daily tasks. For example, during the Ming Dynasty, Wei Zhongxian rose through diligence and shrewd management to become the head of the inner court, wielding great power. Wei Zhongxian not only had a deep understanding of court affairs but also used his political acumen to gain significant influence. His example shows that eunuchs were not merely responsible for simple daily chores. They also handled complex matters and played key roles in political struggles. Eunuchs were not just servants attending to the emperor's daily needs. They often became the emperor's trusted envoys who kept him well informed. In the intricate power struggles of the ancient court, eunuchs, with their unique position and loyalty, became valuable assistants to the emperor in carrying out secret actions. When the emperor found it inconvenient to act openly, eunuchs would often carry out his covert orders. Historically, eunuchs have played important roles in palace power struggles. For example, during the Eastern Han Dynasty, Kai Luan. Not only the inventor of papermaking but also loyal and astute, gained the emperor's trust and participated in many significant political events. Ming Dynasty eunuch Lu Jin and Qing Dynasty's Li Lianying were also key figures in history. Despite the seemingly humble status of eunuchs, their loyalty and political wisdom often made them forces to be reckoned with in court politics. It's worth mentioning that, throughout history, the fates of palace maids and eunuchs differed greatly. Though palace maids were often beautiful, their youth and beauty were fleeting. Over time, their status declined, and some older palace maids were even sent to cold, desolate places, leading to tragic ends. Eunuchs, on the other hand, despite their physical mutilation, often maintained lasting positions in the court through loyalty, wisdom, and diligence, even acquiring power. This contrast in fates reveals that in the ancient imperial palace, physical beauty alone could not guarantee lasting status or power. Although eunuchs were physically impaired, they became the emperor's most trusted attendants and aides through their abilities and loyalty. While palace maids were beautiful, they found it difficult to surpass eunuchs in the complex court power struggles. Some historians have commented that, despite the external perception that palace maids, due to their beauty, should naturally become the emperor's favorites. In the intricate court power games, eunuchs, with their loyalty, lack of gender threat, physical endurance, and political wisdom, became the emperor's most trusted attendants and aides. The status of eunuchs in the imperial palace was, in fact, a reflection of the ancient political system and power structure, illustrating the emperor's strict control and maintenance of palace order. In this complex context, the role of eunuchs beside the emperor far exceeded that of ordinary attendants, becoming a vital part of imperial rule. This is the History and Culture Channel. Liking and subscribing are the greatest help and support to us. Thank you everyone and see you in the next time.